here is another quick note on something to experiment with, with uh, animation. And what I'm talking about is recursive or iterative rendering, iterative animation. And uh, in other words, we start from one image, render it once, and then take the output of that as a starting image for the next rendering and keep going. And occasionally you'll find some really interesting renders. So here's an example. I don't know if I have the original image. No, I don't have it there anymore. This is a, a rendering that I loaded from a file, but it was also created in Howler. And let's say now I want to actually use that as the next render. You simply go back to um, Puppy Ray, if that's how we want to render it. And of course, we could do other things to that before we actually go and render it again. So now this time we have Puppy Ray with water. Let's click the More button here and say we don't want the water plane quite yet. Um, let's see what else we want. Uh, something like uh, a view where we can see the sun. Um, let's enable the global illumination. Let's give it sort of a reddish tint. And there's a, another big sun here that's part of the background image in the sky. Uh, so let's say we do a rendering like this. Right, do this at high quality. And we're done. All right, so I'm saving this. I'm going to go store a copy. And I don't need this uh, as an animation right now. I can I can free the animation. But the key thing is that we have done a rendering and there are some bright elements and some dark elements. The brightest one is probably the sun right here in the middle. And then there are a couple of other bright elements. There's a big bright band of fog and some dark. Now we can also expand the dynamic range to make some parts lighter and some parts darker. Expand dynamic range may make the darker parts a little bit darker until there is a pixel that's totally black. Well, not exactly black, it's the darkest within the hue range as well. So if you want to really have it grayscale, you can do that. You can convert it to grayscale. Any, any of these tools will do. And, and then if you use the uh, expand dynamic range, that's when you'll know you have some pixels that are white and some pixels that are black somewhere around down here. Now, <laughs> that means if we use this again as an elevation map, um, we, can, we can do so and it will be our next iterative render pass. So we'll do a rendering of uh, Puppy Ray again. And with exactly the same parameters, just click render and it looks very different, right? And the, the reason is that the image we had contained one big bright spot here where the sun was, and that is now showing here as a nice monolithic um, elevation, and it just creates its own form of art, depending on where you were positioned, where that spot of the bright sun was, and how big that bright spot was, it creates very different um, uh, new images. So I'm going to store this one, right? And uh, perhaps even without converting it to grayscale, just use it again. Let's go render, transform there and click render. And now we'll probably have yet again something a little bit different, right? And it, it keeps going. And now at some point it may stabilize and become the same image, but it may also look very different every time. Um, you know, especially if you change some parameters like the fog distance, the light color, the elevation of the sun, all of these things could contribute to yet another level of surprise. Let's go do uh, something very different here. Uh, let's first change the quality to just less and then um, let's go without interpolation. Well, no, actually let's do interpolation but a lot of it and um, let's say if we want to move the camera a little bit here, right? So we can see where we're gonna go with this. There's a nice ridge just around there. Okay, now let's go and add some pre-filtering so it's making it a little bit smoother here. Increase the brightness of the skylight. Let's in fact change the skylight uh, to something more bluish like this default sky. That's pretty bright now, perhaps a, a tad too bright. But we do have the bright spot here on the sun. I'm going to make it bigger. Visible sun, let's make it 123. So we have a big bright spot there and we have the original bump showing up here. 
we have another one here and um, w but we have this very bright spot here so I'm gonna go and use that now let's see if we also add water let's enable the water plane All right there it is and that's gonna add a lot of additional bright high elevation spots right when I say bright you have to think for the next rendering if we use this as an elevation map it's gonna be high elevation as well so I'm gonna go to high quality now and there we go and uh, we're done with that let's store this and uh, hey why not let's do another one let's uh, render one more time with exactly the same settings render that and you see it creates a different type of landscape every time All right so occasionally you'll find something just absolutely beautiful that you say oh that's beautiful <laughs> and let's keep it right uh, in fact one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the anti-aliasing off here so I can work a little bit faster I'm gonna add some rockiness to that let's do a quick render and there's probably gonna be some very noisy details maybe more like the mud bank or the riverbed might be useful here and then I'm going to uh, decrease the pre-filter a little bit. I'd like some of these peaks to be more rugged and then the water I'd like to see more of the water so I'm gonna go and bring the camera uh, bring the landscape down with the right button so I see a little bit more of that flooding and then I want to make it transparent and refractive so turn the refraction on render that now you start seeing in now <clears throat> perhaps at this point we can turn the camera a little bit and actually look down into that water let's change not uh, we could move the camera closer or we can change the angle of the camera make it more of a tele wide lens let's move the camera down a little bit and a little bit to the left and something like this that looks like a nice composition um, let's do now a bit more on the quality rendering let's do the anti-alias rendering and see how how good that gets a few more passes I have only six render passes here initially uh, so we'd like to have a bit more into that water so what I'm gonna do is go to the world and in that water we want to see caustics a little bit brighter let's do five and the ground fog notice the ground fog is going to add especially in the distance here above the water the ground fog starts where the water ends or where the water plane is located so when you enable that and uh, perhaps give it about five there as well render you should see there you see a bit of fog like a misty haze uh, hovering over the water um, if you make it a little bit tighter let's say two or three um, it's perhaps a bit too dense let's make it uh, let's make it 10 there well, that's about right now the waves we might uh, do something about the waves make them a little bit more oh maybe add some multi-frequency make them a little bit higher let's say 3 or 4 render that so play to your heart's delight here. There are a lot of things to experiment with. Um, we can make the water more transparent, get darker, have a bit more of a glow, um, as if there was some uh, uh, shiny algae or some, some luminescent presence there. We can make it maybe a seven. And so that, that turquoise blue here is showing a little bit more dominant. You can also make it a different color if you want to make it look like some bacteria that's glowing in pink color or something like that. In fact, let's see what that would look like if we change that color to pink. Something like this. Render that. Now you see some very different looking coloration there. And it's competing for attention with uh, the other things, which are the depth which has the attenuation based on the depth so you could make it go darker a little bit faster um, and so the the pinkish bacteria here looks uh, like uh, you know contained in certain depths uh, maybe we can make it a little bit less intense maybe four so it's very subtle you know at that point you're starting to play with very subtle differences and you can see the bump maps here as well 
There's also some uh, indirect lighting. You see the very yellowish bright coloration on this part of the rock, which doesn't get any direct sunlight because the sun is ahead of us here, but it gets the reflection from the next row of rocks. And if we make the sunlight a bit more of a reddish, we'll see that these parts will turn reddish as well because they get more of that indirect light of the reddish tint now. Um, so I'm going to go back to the scattering more in uh, greenish maybe, something like uh, toxic Venus uh, coloration. And there you go, I would definitely not go for a swim in that water. <laughs> uh, let's see, what else could we do here to make it uh, a bit more surprising? So what, one thing we'll do is we'll we'll render it with uh, multiple rendering passes. Oh, I know what we can do. We can increase the specularity a little bit here, make it three, 33 and uh, let's say nine or eight on the hardness. And then that will give it a bit more of a, a wet metallic reflective look. You see here, a couple of brighter spots uh, that all hint at a bit more of melting snow conditions here. So let's say if we do a, a, a rendering at uh, final quality, <coughs> final rendering. It's going to be uh, finer details. We could still go higher quality, higher details. Right? There's a lot of very fine tunings that you can do here. But uh, I wanted to show you this really from the point of view of iteratively uh, finding interesting new scenes. Right? You start with something, you render it, and then you take that as the new elevation map and render again. And then take that output as another new uh, elevation map and render again. And it keeps generating new forms of uh, landscapes because every time you have rendered something, it's now a total transformation in 3D. There are some bright spots, there are some clouds, there's reflections, there's some specular highlights, there's the sun. And all of those things were not there before and and suddenly you now have a different landscape with new bright spots and new dark spots. You can further uh, increase the contrast or change the parameters. Let's say here, this one we just did. Uh, let's go store that. That's just beautiful. Uh, it deserves to be stored. And uh, what I'll do is I'll increase the dynamic range a little bit. There you go. And I'll store that. And then I'll go and uh, do a, another rendering from that. Right? It's like we've never done. Let's go uh, transform this again into another puppy ray. And this time I'll just blindly go and render that. And it's a different image. Right? It's a different landscape. And you may have some new fantasy landscapes created from that, which surprisingly look awesome. <laughs> what can I say? It's, uh, you know, if you're into this thing of uh, creating some backgrounds for uh, maybe game art, you're an indie game developer, and you're looking for some fantasy landscapes with uh, some some hot boiling water or some toxic uh, waste dump or some snow and ice and a mix of fog and everything, it's, it's a, it's a, very fun little thing to do uh, to just render on top of a render right even something you may have rendered somewhere else you start with any 3d program or any uh, take a digital camera's pictures right and render from that use it as an elevation map to render something and boom you have something new that you can consider a, a fantasy landscape on some alien planet and that's really what i wanted to uh, bring you to take a trip to uh, whatever you want to call it right dog waffle <laughs> All right, well, thanks for watching. F thanks for listening. Uh, lots of babbling here. And uh, we'll uh, see you again on the next time.